Yeah, I just want to give you a heads up so you know ahead of time. So. Oh yeah. Uh, but yeah, first I want to start by thanking you for uh, taking the time to actually come talk with me. Yeah. Um, I, I was definitely caught off guard when you replied to a uh, saying that you would be willing to do it. So thank you <laughs> again. Ha- happy to do it. Yeah. So um, I don't know. I guess oh, I'm going to start this off. Um, so you're. I don't know how you would describe? I guess like the um, the spearhead of the flat Earth community. Uh, essentially, right? I don't know about that. I mean, <laughs> I think you were thinking tip of the spear, but yeah. I I like to call myself uh, if flat Earth is a university, I would call myself the freshman recruiter because you're generally going to run into my stuff first when okay. you get into this. So, so um, so. What brought you into the flat earth community? So was there like a, a singular moment that you just like came across it and just like sparked your interest and you just dug more into it or? Um, did- it was, it, it started out with a lot of hallucinogenic drugs uh, combined with um, transcendental meditation. No, I'm totally making that up. Uh, I was bored, basically. Uh, I was looking into just about every conspiracy you could think of at one point or another since I got out of high school. And had had pretty much done it all. There was a commercial some years ago, and it was kind of a joke, which was, um, you know, I think I can't remember what the commercial was for. It was like I finished the internet. It was something some like some husband said, "I did it, honey. I finished the internet." That's what I had kind of felt with um, YouTube, which was it's like, okay, I've seen, I know all the categories, and especially when it came to conspiracies, I think I'd pretty much done it all, and I had an opinion on just about all of them. And everybody knows about flat Earth. Everybody hates it. It's true. I mean, every I have yet to run a single person. It's like, oh yeah, flat Earth is the greatest thing ever, and they, they go right into it. Everybody starts off in the hole, and there was the same thing with me. And it, there was a just this little little flat Earth video made by a guy in Germany about flights in the Southern Hemisphere in 2014 that caught my eye, and I watched it. Said, oh, it's interesting. Still don't like flat Earth, you know, like a lot of people say, and so I tried to shut it down over a weekend. Because I thought I could. I consider myself a, a clever problem solver if you give me enough time. And then that didn't work. <laughs> I couldn't shut it down. So nine months later, uh, the beginning of 2015, I decided, okay, I'm go- I, apparently I can't solve this on my own. So I basically asked the internet for help. And I made a series of videos called The Flat Earth Clues, which said, I can't prove the globe in a court of law anymore. Tell me where I'm wrong. Here are my points. Boom, 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 boom. You know, shotgun pattern approach. I did one every day for, well, I did the first seven and eight days. And then I slowed down a little bit. I just had to get it out of my head. And uh, it was some of the clearest writing I ever had when I did it. And uh, yeah, here we are four years later. The, the four-year anniversary was, was last month of Flat Earth Clues. And we've got conferences and documentary and hundreds of meetups and I can't lost count of how many channels and I've lost count of how many interviews at this point, which is so weird mm-hmm. considering the topic. So there you go. Okay. Well, there you go. That's, that's pretty interesting. So bringing it back to actually the documentary, cause I actually had just watched that, um, probably like last week. Yeah, cause it was on net cause it was on Netflix, right? Yeah, yeah. exactly. And, but um, by the way, just so you know, it was on every other platform except Netflix. All the way up until, really? yeah, I mean, it was literally, it was released on iTunes and Amazon and YouTube movies and Google Play, not that anyone uses Google Play, uh, since November. And really? when Netflix came out, but it, but it, but you had to pay for them. That was the difference, I think, the, the big difference. Mm-hmm. And so when, when it came out on Netflix just a couple of weeks ago, it just blew up because, it, you know, as you know, with Netflix, everything is in, all inclusive. And so, and then it just started trending and started trending and it was getting, you know, and then the, yeah. So anyway, go ahead. Yeah. Um, so I, yeah, I was going to ask you about it because, uh, the person I had, I have a friend that he also believes he's a, he's a big flat earther as well. And I actually had done an interview with him, um, about a month or so ago. And he actually gave me the idea after seeing the movies, like, Hey, you should, you know, try and get in touch with Mark. He, I heard he's very open to interviews and stuff. Mm-hmm. And so, I was wondering though about the in, about the whole documentary. Did it do it justice? Like, did you think it got to? It did. Across the- it did exactly what I would hope that I hoped it would, which was uh, 
it was, and, and I said this, you know, because the documentary officially came out uh, almost a year ago in April of 2018 when it started in the film festivals up in Toronto. And I had a chance to see it before anybody uh, in a hotel room with the director and the producers. And when I watched it the first time, of course, you know, if you're in it, you know, you get that kind of, oh, wow, look at that. There I am. I look terrible as always. Uh, and you, you, you smile at everybody else that's in it, and then you start analyzing it more and more. And I called it right off the bat, which was, flat, if you're in the community, you're going to have a problem with it. And if you're, not, if you're not in the community, you're going to have a lot of questions. And I saw that over and over and over because it, the, it started really getting traction in the film festivals. We did 22 film festivals in seven countries. Uh, so many that the, the, the producers of it could not go out to all of these, and they started sending me <laughs> to these things to try to uh you know just just represent and which is probably not the best idea because i'm not exactly objective and it was in every everyone that i sat with the audience because i i wanted to make sure that nobody knew where i was in the audience if they even said that i was going to be there uh mm -hmm. they all for like the first 20 minutes remember we're talking 90 percent globalist audience at least uh yeah. the first 20 minutes they wouldn't even they didn't even believe it was real they thought it was like a, a piece of docufiction, which is different from a mockumentary. Mockumentary is tongue in cheek. Docufiction, you play it absolutely straight. You know, like yeah. it, it's a like it's a real topic that's happening and uh, that that nobody knows about, and that's what happened. And then all of a sudden, they realize after they start seeing the montages of mainstream media, that every I guess I saw it click in everyone's head. It's like, wait a minute, this is a thing. There's people, this is actually, people are actually out there doing this. And the, one of the most flattering comments I think we received was there was an editor out of Los Angeles that had no context. He just watched it. His friend said, watch this. The guy knew nothing about Flat Earth. And at the end, he goes, he goes, man, he goes, what kind of budget did you guys have? And he goes, what do you, what do you mean? It's like, what? I mean, the actors, I mean, how, you guys had so many actors. They played it so straight. And, and he stopped me and goes, no, man, it was real. And it just blew this guy's mind. He was like, he was like, wait, wait, that conference, that that flat Earth conference in Raleigh, that happened. That was actually a real thing. It's, dude, I was there, and and yeah, so it was amazing. Um, so, but did it do what I'd hoped? Yes, yes, it did. It is the finest, in my opinion, right now, the finest Trojan horse recruiting tool that we could have mm -hmm. out there. Um, and the, the proof is in right there in the media, right? What, you know, the fact that we're doing this interview, it, like it came out on Netflix, it exploded, a secondary explosion in the media. It, lots of people are talking about it. Uh, my emails doubled within a week. Uh, and everybody in the movie all of a sudden uh, got all this extra um, focus on them, which is both good and bad. So yes, it, I, it but you, I'm sure you have an opinion on it. You saw it. Yeah. Um, so... Obviously, I'm on the other end of the spectrum. Like, I don't, I don't believe the Earth is flat, hmm. but also I'm I'm very open to listen to different ideas, which is why I wanted someone with your level of knowledge to actually be able to talk to, right? Because I'm never going to shut down an idea right away just because I might not initially believe it, right? Sure, sure. Um, so I'm I'm always open. So it's 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 hard for me to believe you because I believe you know in like the NASA images, and I know there's a big debate about that mm -hmm. and how a lot of it's doctrine and you know, I, I do agree that the government itself does do a lot of sketchy things. Right. And it wouldn't, you know, completely blow my mind if they come out that, okay, yeah, we faked a lot of this stuff. I really wouldn't be too surprised. Right. If you know what I mean. Right. But but um, fl but Flat Earth is so big. Yeah, I know. I know what you're saying. Uh, in fact, I've had people come to me and say, okay, fine. I get it. The Apollo landings are utter trash. Everybody knows they're not real. But you can't tell me that the ISS is fake. I'm going, come on, man. It's like... You know, if they're going to fake, here's it's 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 crime 101. And that is if you're going to fake one part of an operation, you might as well fake the rest of it because the punishment's the same. It's it's, it's like you kill one person, you might as well kill them all because <laughs> either way, it's a life sentence. So, mm -hmm. but no, I hear you. I hear you. But anyway, go on. Um, Yeah, so I, I don't know. I just, it just, it, it's interesting to me, though, that. Yeah. Well, interesting um, enough that you contacted me. Yeah, exactly, because it, it is a very – it's a topic that a lot of people automatically shut down when you bring it up. Everybody right? shuts it down. Every yeah. I hated the – I hate the, the flat earth concept when I first saw it, and I was more stubborn than most. The average turnaround time for a convert – I know I'm going to be throwing out some religious terms at you. The average time for a convert is about two weeks. 
right now, and mm-hmm. that is if it's in your head for about two weeks and you can get your, you know, wrap your mind around it, you might come out the other side and you'd be fine. Or you'll be stuck in the side. It's like, nope, science is absolutely real. No, the government. I mean, there was a line. Let me use a line for you. Um, if you ever watch Fo- Fox News, and I don't, I don't vote, so I don't. I don't really have a preference on Fox or NBC or CNN or any of the others. But uh, there's uh, one of the commentators on there named Dana Perino. And she used mm-hmm. to be a, a White House correspondent. Fascinating line. Because they were talking about this on Fox News because it's everywhere now. And she goes, no, I believe in the moon missions because I'm a patriot. And I thought that was really an intriguing statement, which was, no, no, no. If you want to be a good citizen, if you want to be a good American... But it's not even to be American. If you want to be a good citizen, you believe exactly what the government puts out. And to to your point, uh, I know what you're saying. And that's like everybody. Look, we, we live in a world of lies. right? You know, everybody lies about everything all the time. We even pay people to lie for a living. And I won't rattle them off right now. Right. And we all know, you know, business and politics or sports or uh, entertainment and even journalism and um, science. You know, there, there are lies that happens. I mean, I could give you multiple examples on all those fronts. It's just a question of when it comes to because somebody asked me recently what it takes to be a conspiracy person. You know, what makes a conspiracy person? I go, well, there's this imaginary line that we draw. And that is everything on this side of the line is truth and everything on the other side is lies or vice versa. And somewhere along the line that line shifts voluntarily or involuntarily. And then you, you get awakened to something like uh, the first time I saw JFK in the theater by Oliver Stone. You know, if you watch that movie, honestly, if you have any critiquing eye, you're going to watch that and say, yeah, yeah. I mean, everybody that walked out of that theater, I saw it an opening weekend back in the day. They were angry. They were like, yeah, freaking government. And to the point where the government had to respond. They were putting people on talk shows saying, look, it's just a movie, you know, and yeah. Uh, but at the same time, you know, we all have that line, which is, okay, I can believe things up to a point. I know there's lies, but I'm not going to cross that line and believe other things. You know, some people it's like, well, uh, you know, I, I believe in, in, you know, 9-11, maybe Sandy Hook, maybe not Pearl Harbor, maybe JFK, maybe not Apollo moon landing. You know, it's, it's kind of all over the place. And so everybody's got their thing, but when it comes to flat earth, it's one of the only, it's so big. It's so freaking huge that people, it's, it's tough. It's, it's my, I mean, I've even had people, I know I'm rambling, but, but let me get this point out. I've had people that have said, you're turning the universe into a studio apartment. And that, and that makes me claustrophobic. And I've heard this more than once. And I go, yeah, you know what? And there was a guy, let, let me, let me change, change it. And I'll say for most conspiracies, you can walk. You can walk away from them. If you don't want to look at JFK or 9/11 or vaccines or whatever, you don't have to. It will not change your life. But flat Earth changes everything. And lots, for some people, that's that's really spooky. I had a guy yell at me on a Colin show once, where he said, "He goes, how dare you? How dare you, young man, tell me the world isn't what I think it is?" I was going, "Yeah, well, there's the point right there. You know, people yeah. people brace against it." Anyway, sorry. Go ahead. Well, yeah, because I mean, you're right though. Because with the flat Earth theory and everything it doesn't just affect one like state or city or country like it affects everyone so it's a global thing so i so can to see speak, the yes that, yeah yes yeah, so, oh yeah <laughs> that's <laughs> all right no it's a con- look it's that that term is in your head for a reason don't forget yeah. flat earth is the only thing that we debunk to children that's it we don't tell kids about jfk or 9-11 or all the other stuff right but we put a globe in their classroom and the teachers are pretty good about saying it back you know back in the day we used to think the earth was flat isn't that funny and then they leave the globe in the classroom for at least well if you go through high school 12 years and and, i mean it might as well be the american flag people are willing to fight for it when you get out to a certain point you know where it's like you know they fight for the flag why wouldn't they fight for the globe they're literally sitting side by side in the classroom so anyway go ahead so um history uh the flat earth right Right. so like i I know way back when we we believed the earth was flat and that was a a strong belief for hundreds of years right oh thousands that would be it was it was way all civilizations and i've got a chart i could send you uh just about every civilization you could think of believed in the flat earth because that's what they saw but you know way way back when and then it only changed about 500 years ago roughly uh use the the line from men in black which was 500 years ago everybody knew the earth was flat and then it changed 
And then yeah. science came out and said, nope, it's a globe and it's a solar system and it's a galaxy and it's all the other things. And it stayed that way, even though there were stragglers kicking around uh, all the way up until uh, roughly 2015. So who – now, I, my history on the the whole flat earth and globe um, timeline isn't good at all. That's okay. <laughs> That's okay. So, no worries. Um, is there like a singular person who dis- like actually discovered in their mind that, okay, the earth is actually like a sphere? Like they proved that it was a sphere and then – Oh, you mean fi- that- you mean five hundred years ago? Yeah. You, um, the the, the big the big uh, depends on who you talk to. I mean, if you go into science, and this is one of my arguments to science, science say, well, the Greeks thought about it. It's like, yeah, mm-hmm. but really, it wasn't until Copernicus. That's the name you should look up. Uh, I mean, it's called the Copernican model for a reason, uh, and he was the one that really pushed it. But what's interesting was when they pushed it, all they had was math. Now I know people saying, "Oh, math is the truth; it's the universal language." I'm going, "Yeah, kind of, sometimes." But you, you're going to make some leaps of faith and some assumptions with math as well. I mean, Nikola Tesla was the first one to say that. And then they were pushing the globe for pretty much nonstop for four and a half centuries, roughly, maybe five centuries. And but thing was, and and I I won't take credit for this line. I mean, everybody absorbs stuff from everybody else. Which was, unless you get high enough to take an actual photo of the Earth, what do you really know? I mean, you, mm-hmm. can, you, can, you can talk geometry and trig all day long, but until you can actually show people a picture of the Earth, what do you really mm-hmm. know? And that didn't happen. What was interesting was NASA wasn't even found. NASA was founded in 1958. They did not even take the first blue marble shot until 1972. And, and by that, I mean, they did all their Apollo runs, all, you know, Gemini and Mercury and Apollo, and they didn't take the first shot until literally their last moon mission. It was weird. You'd think Apollo 8 through Apollo 16, they would have taken the shot. It's like, no, let's wait until the last mission, right? Last episode of the television series, which really all, is all it was. And we'll take this shot. And it's really just, I mean, it's, it's, it's not Photoshop because Photoshop wasn't alive yeah. around back then but it was airbrushed and and i mean it was painted it was an a uh, completely altered image and they milked that shot what's fascinating to me was they milked that shot from 1972 all the way up until the middle of 2015 there were no other blue marble shots and i knew this just on accident when i was running a tech support group in uh, boulder colorado back in 2000 you know, the internet was up, you know, it wasn't what it is today, but it was up and there was stuff, there was a lot of stuff out there. And I wanted to put iconic earth shots on all the different monitors and I wanted to use different shots. And I would type in just about every Boolean string you can think of, earth from space, space images, earth images, blah, blah, blah. just kept pumping in. I kept getting just one image over and over and over and over. It was the Apollo 17 uh, blue marble shot. And, mm-hmm. I, and I couldn't, I couldn't figure out why I'm going, and I, in fact, I was yelling at the screen going, NASA, you suck. You have the like the worst <laughs> internet presence ever. It's how are you? How is there only one shot out there? And I just frustrated and gave up. I could not see the forest for the trees, and that's because they were so scared at the time about releasing a second shot because there might be differences, and you know maybe a date time date stamp issue that they didn't know about that they just milked that shot, and then only when we and I know this sounds like delusions of grandeur, but only when we came out and started hitting the ground, <clears throat> excuse me, running in 2015, that's when they changed it. Sorry, I rambled. No, no, but okay. Talk away. I, I'm here to listen to you and hear your story. And I know, I know, but but so I, but I'm sure you have more questions, and I, I know I, I take too long to answer some of them. But I'm not like tree beard. I, I actually will get a point across. Yeah, no, I actually I don't have any preset questions. I'm just kind of going with the. Oh, okay, okay. So, yeah, um, what else? What else? Uh, so that's that's how we got to this point, and then. When there was, here's what helped us. There's a couple things I've, I've realized fairly recently. Why Flat Earth took off the way it did. One was uh, because of how it was released. Meaning, okay, social media was out there. Social media changed the game. I mean, come on, 90% of Flat Earth is on YouTube, which is owned by one of the largest corporations in the world now, Google. Um, the other thing was, is that we had a couple guys that were doing some Flat Earth things in 2014 but they were kind of high level, higher level stuff. And it what you know, like if you think of it like university, uh, you know, 101 books versus 201 books versus 301 books. And when I came up with the clues, there was already some content that was already out there. I didn't invent Flat Earth, but my stuff was definitely 101. 
And so people read my stuff and then they turned around and went back backwards to, you know, to grab the other stuff. And so now we already had, you know, a, quite a bit of, now we had a, a continuous content line that you could follow. And then the third thing that helped us was, well, I mean, we'll, we'll talk about the celebrities here in a second. Uh, the third thing that helped us was all the moon mission stuff. You got to remember that the, the, the Americans, uh, there, there's been conspiracy people that have been picking on the moon, the Apollo program since basically it came out. So we'll mm -hmm. just round like to the eighties. Like, so since, since the, since the internet was in, in out there, there've been people talking about how terrible the moon footage has, has aged over the years. And that you combine that, which was one of our main things. That's like one of the first things to attack when you're going after NASA, which is tied to flat earth, combine all those things. And you've got like this perfect little, grassroots movement that goes through 2015 and then in 2016 that's when um Kyrie Irving uh, no no so that was 2017 B.O.B. uh rapper B.O.B. decided to make uh an album with Flat Earth on the cover and made a song called Flatline that was dedicated against Neil deGrasse Tyson and using yeah, I remember that actually. yeah yeah called called Flatline where he calls him out and says look uh Neil's paid <laughs> basically <laughs> And he's just he's just saying whatever they want him to say, which is true. He doesn't do debates. He just goes on. And he's he's practically a science jack in the box. He goes on stage and, and you crank him up and you know, dun, 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 dun. he pops out and he says space is amazing. That's all he does. He gets paid. Oh, well, he used to until that whole allegation thing recently. Uh, you know, hashtag me too hits everybody. Uh, and that carried us through. Uh, and then and you think, right, that that B.O.B., when he did this, like all Neil had to do was not respond. But no, Neil goes on Comedy Central and does this rant against B.O.B. And the media just loved it. That carried us through most of 2016. And then uh, 2017, Kyrie Irving decided to come out on a podcast just before he landed at the All-Star Game. So he walks right into media day. What, what do you think they're going to do? I mean, athletes are notorious for giving terrible interviews. Because, you know, because they're athletes, right? They're, they're like soldiers in a way. It's like, yeah, offense, defense, 110%, coaching is key, blah, blah, blah. And all of a sudden, a guy comes, oh, yeah, by the way, I believe in flat earth. Are you kidding? They just, just descended on yeah. him. And then LeBron, you know, they're still in the afterglow of their championship. You know, LeBron's like, oh, yeah, Kyrie's great. I support whatever he's doing. It's like, are you kidding? Is, that was gold. That was gold. That carried us through um, most of 2017, and there were other athletes and, and from different sectors that came out. And then 2018 yeah. started off with freaking Mad Mike, uh, mm -hmm. the Rocket guy, who who came to us unsolicited and said, "Hey, uh, could I have some money to finish my rocket?" <laughs> like, okay, sure. Put a flatter sticker on the side of it, and that was that was just media gold. I mean, mm -hmm. to where the and and he still and he delayed the mission twice, so you know that you know cliffhangered it twice, and so that carried us through all, you know most of 2018, and then the conference, the conferences, and then of course the documentaries. So, yeah, it's been this weird steady stream of a, a cross between this organic branching out and uh, and media things that that are that are tied to it, but it's been fascinating. Yeah, and it definitely has helped you guys out a lot. Because, oh, I mean, yeah. even if it doesn't necessarily, like, the the publicity, right? Even if it doesn't necessarily convince people, it'll get people intrigued. Because, oh, like, yeah. myself, right? The documentary itself, even when B.O.B. Uh, had said something, right. you know, like, that's actually, I think, when I first started looking it up. Because I saw he had made a tweet that he believed the earth was flat. And I was like, okay, there's no way this has got to be, like, a publicity stunt. Right, right. He can't believe this. And I researched it, and then I found this whole entire community of just people that were dead set on believing that it's flat. And I was like holy hell like this is a real thing yeah yeah you you're saying basically the same thing that a lot of people it's like you know everybody knows there's all sorts of fun stuff on the internet but it's like going to a corner of the internet you stumbled across this vast corner of the internet that wasn't even you didn't even know existed mm -hmm. and and then you real you're, you're going in there it's like wait there's all these people in there wait i know that guy and that guy's a celebrity and and who, wait who are these people and and you're real. You're it's like walking. It's kind of like walking through a mansion, and then getting to a door that you didn't even notice before. You thought it was a closet, and you walk in, and it's practically another mansion on the other side of it. Yeah, it just freaks people out. And uh, I mean, it didn't. Of course, when I was doing it, there was hardly there was hardly much there. 
but now mm -hmm. it's uh oh yeah it's nutty it's absolutely nutty i mean and that's the thing though it's it's something that people like truly believe in too it's not just oh, yeah. like a parody or something no, like no 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 like... there's an absolute and here's why you're, you're wondering why do people believe so strongly in it and uh even after the documentary and and you know the whole laser thing with jaron and the gyroscope thing with bob you know why why is why is the flyer thing just keep getting bigger and that is because there's so many facets to it that lean towards a flat earth that you can't you can't pull away uh, we have a 99 percent retention rate and that's that's not ex not an exaggeration and here's why can i prove to you right now that the earth is flat no i cannot can i create so much reasonable doubt in the globe that the only place you have left to turn is some sort of flat model yes i can and th and and that's that's the key because there's a lot of variations to the flat earth model because obviously we, do, we don't know exactly what it looks like we're you know every, it's like we're draw trying to draw something ethereal you're trying to look through this fog and you yeah. and you got a pretty good idea what it is but there's always these lingering things and people that, that go into that at the end, even if you want to go back to the globe, and, and a few people have tried, you can't because at that point, but just by looking into flat earth, you, you tore apart the globe. So, you know, there's so much doubt in the globe. You can't go back to it. You keep looking at the globe going, uh, uh, I, you know what, I'm just going to, I'm just going to, what I've run into is people that, that, yeah, they get in hot and heavy in flat earth. They start up a YouTube channel and they make videos. It's like, I've been in flat earth. And then they realize, you know, for a lot of them, they, uh, they realize it's like, okay, well, I'm just going to let other people, you know, do the research and stuff and I'll, I'll wait until there's proof. You know, they're still in the camp, you know, like 90% yeah. of 90% of our members are in the closet because they just don't want to come out to friends or family or, or, um, colleague, you know, work coworkers. Uh, they're, they're worried. I mean, heck I've got family members alone that be like, oh yeah, I'm totally with you. Yeah. I'm not coming out though. <laughs> And yeah. I, I don't, I don't blame you. I absolutely don't blame well, you. That, that is a, that is a tough like pill to swallow, especially like in telling, like you said, your friends and family that are most likely going to believe the traditional belief that the earth is a globe. Right. So you come right. out and say, Hey, just so you know, I, I, like my, my buddy, I'm giving him a shout out. Jermaine is the one I did an interview with. Right. He, he was telling me the same thing that it was hard for him at first to even say anything. Oh because yeah. He knows, like the ridicule you guys instantly get. And that's why I feel like, I think you guys, it's an injustice to you guys because you guys have a different belief and that's fine. But you got a different belief where people just instantly shut down. They don't even give you the time of day to like listen or just like, oh, okay, you know, hey. And, and, it's just and, I, it, and it's okay though because I don't, it's one of those things where it's different from, uh, it's, honestly, as far as polariz polarization topics, there, how many, I don't care if it's um, abortion or stem cell research or gay rights or black rights or, or women's rights or whatever it is, nothing affects people like this because it goes all the way back to your childhood. Um, I can't get mad at people because I was them. You know, I was on that side of the fence. I cannot get mad at you because like, no, I, I absolutely know where you're coming from because I was there and everybody says that. One of the reasons though, it, it people get that knee-jerk reaction is because it cuts through time. It goes all the way back to your childhood. It's kind of like telling somebody, the analogy I came up with a little while ago is like kind of like telling somebody you're adopted. If I came to you and said, you know what? I'm pretty sure you're adopted, right? And you're going, I am not, no offense if you are adopted. And, and it's like, it's like, no, man. And you go into tonight. It's like, no, no, I am not. I absolutely know positively 100% I'm not adopted. And in fact, as long as you're in that state of mind, it doesn't affect you whatsoever until, you know, because people say, you know, why do I care if the earth is round or flat? It's not going to affect me. I go, it's not going to affect you until you believe it. And once you, all of a sudden, once the second you think, wait a minute, am I adopted? The second you do that, all of a sudden you start, your mind reaches all the way back to when you were six years old and you start, it's like, wait a minute, what did my parents, who are those people? What, what I remember being in a basket or whatever it is. It, it, all of a sudden you start questioning all the memories leading up to that point. And it can be jarring, really, really yeah. jarring. And so I, again, I don't blame you know, people, people yell, people brace, uh, but there's a line that I I've used. Uh, and I still think it's applicable today, which is if you don't laugh at flat earth, the first time you hear it, there's probably something wrong with you because, because everybody should, because that's what the conditioning is. We all know yeah. it's a globe. We were raised, there was a globe. 
at least through high school, and if you made it, you know, if you made it through like your bachelor's or master's or PhD, if you have like a master's in a, in a physical science, there's nothing I can do. It's too, it's too far in your brain. Uh, you will not believe it literally until mainstream stump comes out and says, by the way, the earth is flat. And then you'll probably crawl into a bottle for a year, you know, drink a lot, oh, yeah. drink a lot of scotch. And that's, and that's my next question though. How do you think the world as a whole would react if there was definitive proof, like you had, you were able to send some, a spaceship or a person or whatever it is. Right. Or, or, you know, whatever test you got to do it, but it definitively proved that the earth was actually flat and no one can deny it. I, what do you nowadays, I don't think it would be that bad because of social media, meaning, yes, it would affect a lot of people. Now, does that mean there wouldn't be chaos? No, no, no. There potentially could be a lot of case chaos. And I talked about that in the clues, which was, and it's, it's a three pronged thing, uh, well, three pronged issue uh which is first off is academic uh which is you gotta remember every there's a lot of universities in the world and you were talking about astrophysics and astronomy you'd basically have to shut those down th those close you won't even reopen those until you figure out what the hell's going on and the, the remaining physical sciences uh geology hydrology biology archaeology take, take your pick those have to be rebuilt literally from the ground floor you and that and that's just academia right economically the world markets are so twitchy on a, on a regular basis. I mean, come on. If Donald Trump got pneumonia tomorrow and he'd be like on his deathbed, the markets would reflect that. That's one guy. All of a sudden, you, yeah. you, you tell people the earth is not, you know, that science was wrong about a hue or, or hiding it, you know, or some science, not all science, obviously, was hiding this thing. Uh, I mean, you'd have to basically suspend world markets for, I, I'm guessing, at least a month, maybe two before you even announce it, just because of the knee-jerk reaction would be panic. People, the markets would be like, okay, because everyone wants to know how, there'd be so much speculation on where the money is wasted and where, you know, emerging markets versus declining markets, they wouldn't even know where to go with the money. Uh, it's like, mm -hmm. okay, like what happens with this, and especially um, war, which I talked about, is like, look, we have huge weapon companies in this world, massive. Some of the biggest companies in the world are weapons companies. But if we are in an enclosed system, that changes sort of the aspect of war. And so anyway, world markets. And then, of course, the last but certainly not least would be the religious angle, which is um, think of it this way. All the, the big five religions in the world, um, Hinduism, Buddhism, Judaism, Islam, Christianity. They all have a stake in this, right? They've been beaten over the head with science textbooks for the last 500 years. And all of a sudden you're giving those five groups simultaneously leverage against science. And you're asking them not to take revenge. That will be so difficult for them <laughs> because they talk, they talk about science in every sermon every week. You know, they, they talk and, and so you're asking them because here's what's going to happen. They would go back. They would just push back to science that would be, OK, so you were wrong about this really big thing. I think we should revisit other things like, oh, I don't know, evolution, carbon dating, the Big Bang Theory, dark matter, dark energy, just about everything. Everything. Basically, science would be on the ropes for a while and they, they wouldn't know what to do. So you combine those three things. And people ask, like, why would you hide it? And it's like, are you kidding? Uh, that's one of the, the shortest smoking man X-Files meetings ever. You know, it's like, because like, somebody says, hey, what's the worst that could happen? And then you rattle off what I just rattled off. And they'd be like, yeah, we're going to release this when we think the public is ready. And part of me thinks that the public is pretty much ready now. I mean, everything's ready. Everything's in place for it. Meaning the, yeah. the the six billion smartphones, social media, high speed internet, you can get the same story. You know the old criminal saying: "It's like let's get our story straight." You can push the same message to everybody in a very very quick amount of time, to where ninety nine percent of the people would be at least fed the same spin, and then do with it what you want. Uh, but yeah, you, but that's yeah, that's why you hide it, uh, and that's why eventually. It, but it can't be kept a secret forever. It can't. The technology caught up with them, and they knew this. I mean, these aren't dumb people. They recruit only the best and brightest. Anyway, mm -hmm. that's it. I mean, yeah, that you mean, that's a very valid point though, because like, I can see that really causing a huge ripple effect through, like you said, all different types of categories. Like yeah. you said, religious, economic, 
you know, just even like a personal day to day life. I mean, you've been told like a lie essentially your entire life. And then so suddenly, oh, yeah, by the way, like we said, the earth is actually flat. Yeah, I, me personally, I'd be like, I mean, I think I'd be a little bit more be like, oh, okay, well. Well, yeah, I mean, okay, let's 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 put let's change it up though. Let's say uh, the average person on the street, because I've heard this a lot. It's like, hey, you know what? I still have to go to work in the morning. Uh, my wife still doesn't listen to me. My kids are her terrible. <laughs> my life doesn't change that much. I was like, well, it doesn't. It doesn't. One, everyone would be talking about it. That's all they would be talking about uh, for years, if not decades. People would be t just talking about it constantly. This would be like the topic on the street. Um, at the same time, though, there'd be people out there, like you were saying, they would question. It's like all of a sudden they'd walk outside and they'd just look up at the sky and they go, huh. And then they'd be like, what does this mean? How, how does this? And, and, and of course, the default thing and not saying that it's going to kill atheism. Uh, but sometimes they do say that because it's really tough to be an atheist. You got to remember the default state for flat earth. If we are in a building, some sort of structure is that it was built by someone. And fine, if you don't want it, if you don't follow one of the main, main religious houses, at the very least, it's a civilization that's way older and way more powerful than us. And if that's yeah. the case, I'm not, you know, if you want to say it's aliens, if it makes you feel better, fine, it's aliens. Uh, but either way, I mean, one man's advanced civilization is another man's deity. And then you're just kind of splitting hairs. But come on, if, if a giant golden spaceship landed somewhere tomorrow, as long mm -hmm. as the beings were better looking than us, there would be a huge contingency in this world that would worship them plain and simple yeah. so, again that's the key there people it's like they have to be better looking than us if they look anything like any movie alien ever made <laughs> there's going to be a bias they have to they have to in fact you could only be one of really three colors here's the weird thing you could only be if you came out and and did this you have to be either blue like avatar um, mm -hmm. silver or gold, any other color is already here. So there would be this bias anyway. That's, yeah. That's another story for another time. Yeah. It, it would be, it would be crazy. Mm -hmm. Um, now what do you, now do you think, okay, let me say, keep it on topic. If the earth was proven to be flat, right. do you think roles would reverse? You know, we have like a flat earth community. Do you think it would still be people who disbelieve in, now what is accepted as the norm is the flattest earth and you'd have like a globe earthers like the roles would reverse you oh yeah yeah there, there might be but if you were going to do it but but it's different now uh because again of social media back in back in the day when it went from a flat earth to a globe you know, remember there were barely newspapers 500 years ago so i mean word of mouth took a long time to pass you know um i mean heck there were people that couldn't a lot of a lot of the population couldn't even read and write so um there yeah there might be some globe earthers you know that would still hold on i suppose but most of those most most of the population would would cave in uh because of peer pressure and you know again the authority you have to be somebody in authority to make the announcement a lot of people believe like dana perino Whatever the television tells them is true. Mm -hmm. If the, the hardcore globe, here's the irony, the, hi the hardcore globe resistance would be um, um, scientists. And, and by that, I mean most of them would be physicists and astrophysicists mm -hmm. because they are highly based in math and they just wouldn't be able to accept it which is, uh, you know, it's like, look, be, because you're talking about them, you know, they spend a huge amount of money in education and decades of their lives um, trying to work out equations for uh, the solar system that they never could reach. And then all of a sudden you're telling, oh, yeah, by the way, there is no solar system. So, sorry, you know, you were you were looking at a television screen, for lack of a better world, uh, word, word and, and thinking that it was real. Uh, you know, your math might have been, you know, sort of right, but it doesn't really matter because you were describing uh, an image. You know, no, no different than um, breaking to somebody that you know, who goes into a planetarium and looks up at the moon and spends years, you know, hypothetically looking at that moon in the planetarium, and and somebody all of a sudden just turns it off and says, "Yeah, yeah. sorry, it wasn't real." And it's like, now, well, go ahead. It, now, is that your belief? That, so you think when we look up to the stars and like the the moon and we see other planets, now do you believe that that's all projected? Like that's yeah. Yeah, I mean, no no different than a planet. Well, the moon and the sun would be slightly different. It's not like our planetarium. Our planetariums are kind of old school. They've been around since the 70s. 
Um, but yeah, the the moon. I'm sorry, the the planets and the stars are just would be just lights in the sky, pretty little lights. The sun and the moon obviously give off some energy. They would be their own entities. Uh, the sun is basically just an incandescent light bulb, for lack of a better word, and it's probably instanced, which we may or may not get into. Um, and the moon is an LED bulb, which generates a, a cold refrigerant light, which we only figured out about three years ago, which is just freaky. Um, and if you don't know what that is, it, it generates a light that actually cools things. And we, I didn't even know this existed. We can replicate it now in universities. It's called a, a cold laser. Uh, where you fire, you know, everyone thinks lasers melt things. No, no, no. You can actually frequency adjust the, the laser and make it cool things as well. And we see that with moonlight. So if, um, you know, we, we all know that it's like 90 degrees in the sun, it's 80 degrees in the shade, right? Because the things block the, the sun rays. Mm -hmm. Well, if you're in the moon, it's the exact opposite. It's, say, it's 50 degrees in the moonlight. It's 60 degrees. And in fact, up to 13 degree swing in the moon shade. Well, that, that's not possible because remember the moon is supposedly reflecting sunlight and that's, yeah. that's radiation and it's heat. So at the very least, it should be a fraction warmer, if not neutral. And we see a, a, quite a swing, which is amazing. And science, and what you can, you can test this with a, like a point and click infrared thermometer for 20 bucks at a hardware store. Uh, and if we just kind of found out by accident. And it's like, okay, does that prove a flat earth? No, it is not. But it absolutely destroys any relationship between the sun and the moon and what science says is happening between the sun and the moon. Anyway. Okay. That's it. I, I never, uh, well, no, I lied. I did hear about that. Yeah, I, I, I did, didn't, I, I had to prove, I had to do it myself. I had to go down to the hardware store, pick up a point and click thing, you know, wait for the moon to be high in the sky. I'll be damned if it didn't work. I mean, you can watch YouTube videos on it all day long. I mean, it's not a, it is a very, very easy test to do. The question is why, why does it do that? Uh, and then you start, it's like, okay, why would you, if, when you get into this long enough, you start asking questions like, okay, why did you build it like this? And why was this put in place? Um, some things are, are more obvious than others. Some things are clever. Like for example, um, adding 3% salt solution to make the oceans. You know, because the, the, the oceans are 3% salt, which is just enough that marine life can still survive just fine, but human beings cannot drink it. And yeah. that, that is just a clever little piece of work because that limits, that limits your ship travel back in the old days, your exploration, by like 90 something percent because they, you literally based your travel on how much fresh water you had you could keep on board with you. And, mm -hmm. uh, and if you, because if you could drink what you were sailing on... <sighs> You just never stop. Yeah. You just keep going. So it slows down civilization. It's brilliant. Wow. I, I didn't know that. Yeah, that's, that's true. Actually news to me. That is actually news to me. I, I, did, I mean, I knew you couldn't just drink ocean water. Right. It's but... just salty enough that we can't drink it. Yeah. Just salt. Just salty enough. Other animals can drink it more or less. And, you know, and marine life doesn't seem to have any problem. But there's a neat little balance in this whole system. It's, uh, it's, it's, I, I really dig it. Nice. Now, who do you think actually controls the back to the whole um, skylight and or like the moon and, and the stars? You know, you said they're like they're basically projections, right? Right. right. Who, who actually do you believe is in control of that? Do you think it's like a group, like an organization? Do you think it's just the U.S. or? Oh, you mean control of the the whole dome? Because oh, you mean like the the, the, stru the structure itself? Well, not necessarily the structure, but who do you think? Is hiding um, it. Yeah, who do you think projects like the the like Saturn and the stars? Oh no no no, that's part of the system. I mean, everything that we see, we have nothing to do with this. We didn't okay. even know. Well, I'm what I'm saying is, and I know they didn't talk about it. I mean, they did in the very very beginning of the of the movie, but by that time, people were just glossed over. Which was, we didn't even know. Even our best and brightest didn't figure this out until about 1960, because we just didn't have the tech to do it. And by the, it was a system that was already implemented. The before. system was already in place. Think, think for example, if you were the king of France in 1500, right? And somebody showed you a map. They came up with a big scroll and put it on a big desk for you and said, this is what the earth really looks like. What are you going to do? You got wooden ships. You got horses. That's all you got. You can't do mm -hmm. anything. Literally until, I mean, come on. Up until the internal combustion engine was, was kind of refined in the early 1900s. And plane travel, we didn't even get compressed uh, pressurized cabins in planes until decades after that. 
you didn't even have the ability to explore most of this world until almost 1960, the rest of the world. And mm. that's when they figured it out. And again, all the way up until that point, the United States and the Soviet Union, you know, they barely had freaking jets <laughs> at that point. They figure it out and they're like, huh, yeah, let's, uh, you know, we're, we're going to sit on this. So, no, human beings have nothing to do with it. The only thing human beings, uh, the role that they played was just keeping the secret going. That's all, mm. that's all the role that any body of government ever did. And only for the last 60 years. Now, do you think, though, that the government or world governments actually are capable of withstanding such a, a huge lie? Because it's not something small, right? No. It's, it's not it, – it, this is huge. Do you think they actually have the capability of checking their – every single outlet to make sure everything is lined up uh, so everyone believes the same thing well, and keeping it so tight-knit that no one can – you yeah. know, it's a, I know it's a good question, and that is, can you keep can you keep a secret like that, and how long can you keep? And you're absolutely right. That's a great question. Uh, you can. It's again, it's not 100 percent guaranteed, obviously, because we're talking about it. Uh, yeah. And it's only time and money. And they had to start out small because remember, 1960, three television networks. Um, a lot of countries didn't even have cars in 1960. Yeah. I mean, China was pff, China wasn't even really industrialized in 1960. And they uh, all they had to do was was spend it, it was escalating. So it started out small, which was okay. What are the, the and the, the moves they made, which is why I talked about in the clues. Uh, and the moves they made were exactly what I would have done. The first thing you do is you seal off Antarctica, which they did. Mm -hmm. 1959. You just seal that sucker off. You make everybody sign the treaty. You make it bulletproof. Yeah, Again, the yeah the only treaty to ever never be broken, and it's not even up for debate until 2041. Then you seal off the upper edge, and that is a two-part process. One, you militarize space with NASA in 1958. You announced the Van Allen radiation belts in 1959, which, by the you know, coincidentally, is the same year that the Antarctic Treaty was ratified. If those two hadn't been ratified in the same year, I might have had a little wiggle room there. But no, they, it was it was the broad strokes were exactly what I would have done. And then you keep militarizing space. And the, they did a clever thing, which was, okay, we know people are curious about the moon. Let's just get this thing over with. We'll go to the moon. We'll make it seem really boring. There's nothing there. Make it super bland. Everyone goes home. And that's what they did. They round trips, you know, six in three years or something like that. To where, they, to where they even said, well, nobody cares about the moon anymore. So after 1972, they just said, oh, this will be our last mission. Good night, everybody. You know, roll credits. And that's what they did. And then nobody went back. And after that, they just kicked the can down the road combined with the carrot we never, ever will get. And that is every president from Reagan through Trump, every president said the same thing. Oh, we're dedicated going back to the moon. You know, Bush, Clinton, Obama, the other Bush, they kept saying the same thing. Nobody went. But everyone thinks it's like, oh, well, you know, you ask anybody, so oh, we're dedicated to going back to the moon. And no, nobody. No. Why didn't why didn't the Russians <laughs> Why didn't the Soviet Union keep going? The space race, mm -hmm. everybody hyped up, and then the Americans yeah. get there, and the Soviet Union just quits? They just stop? They, they, they literally shut down their entire... Not only did they shut down the moon program, they shut down everything. They was like, nope, we're not... Yeah, we're done. It's, what, what, there's a, that's never happened in the history of competition, I don't think. It's like, a, like the first marathon uh, guy crossing the finish line, and the other people just walk off the course. Just mm -hmm. doesn't make any sense. So sorry. I, it's like, wait, I'm done. Yeah. Now, do you think? Now, do you think every president that we've had knows that the Earth is flat? No. Do you think it stops? No. Nope. do you think it? It's it's. Where do you think in government? Where do you think it stops at? Like, well, who do you think actually? Knows? That's just it. So, so there's a lot of people. No, it's a good question because a lot of people say it's such a big secret that you would need millions and millions of people to know. It's like all scientists and all pilots and all presidents and all these members of government. It's like no, no, no. This isn't like the Manhattan Project where we're at war and we're making the atomic bomb and you can keep people separate. And by the way, we did keep that secret, which was, you know, mm -hmm. you just compartmentalize things. And yeah, of course, everybody knew they were refining uranium. And yeah. the, but but the same time, look, we're at war and that was a whole different circumstance. This is so big that less is more, meaning need to know is there. There is no better example of need to know. So you don't, because you want as many people acting naturally as possible. Do I think Neil deGrasse Tyson knows? Probably not. He knows something, yeah. 
Uh, but they also learn from their mistakes, which is like the Apollo astronauts. I think the Apollo astronauts knew. I think they went. I think they were recruited to be on an actual moon mission. They were going to be heroes. They got their best guys. These were great guys. I mean, the the um, the right stuff movie was basically an astronaut recruiting movie. And mm -hmm. I think at the end they told them it's like, okay, here's the deal, which is kind of like Capricorn One. Capricorn One, a, a fantastic movie along those lines, where you take the astronaut to say, okay, you're not going. Here's the reason why. And if it's the, there's an old saying by um, one of our old presidents, FDR, Franklin Delano Roosevelt. He said, only tell the public as much truth as they can handle. And when they told the Apollo astronauts, they just freaked out. They, they all mm -hmm. became recluses. They all crawled into bottles. They, they didn't talk to the press. Neil Armstrong was a freaking basket case. I mean, he was, he was honestly a train wreck. Because honestly, there's this guilt. It's like, look, you're going down. Um, you're having parades in your honor. High schools named after you. And you didn't do anything. That is going to weigh on you after a while, especially if you're a Boy Scout. You know, if you're you're one of those guys. But as far mm -hmm. as other people knowing, so wait, I'm sorry, I'm I'm kind of rambling. The um the 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 Capricorn One was a perfect example of that. Only the high high brass need to know, and the and the telemetry guys, the nuts and bolts guys that um that that do the data transfer. It's like okay, here's where the rocket is because that has to be faked. The guys that turn the wrenches at NASA, that build the fuel systems and polish the capsules and all that, they don't need to know anything. You know, you because yeah. you want as many people acting as naturally as possible. Telling the President of the United States, okay, come on, the President of the United States is a figurehead and has been for decades. Uh, they are literally just put, nowadays, the President of the United States is just somebody you put up on camera and you have him read the teleprompter. Uh, you do not need to tell him. In fact, if it was me, if I was running the show, I would not tell him. Uh, because there's no reason to. There's no benefit to having him know. He may know something, but he's. you don't have to tell him. Um, th th on that note, uh, the last president, I think, that had any power uh, was Eisenhower. And the only reason he had power is because he was a five-star general and led the Allied forces in World War II. That's the only reason, you know, that's, that's, old, that's Roman tactics right there. Uh, there's this great little story. Hang on, I got to tell you this real quick because it's a fun little story. Where I heard the rumor was, I believe it. I absolutely believe it because it's a, it's. I love stories. You can't really poke holes in the plot, which was Eisenhower becomes a civilian, obviously, and becomes president of the United States. And he finds out because he's curious about military projects. He finds out from somebody, from somebody, because he knows everybody in the military still that uh, that Area Fifty One was built, basically completed without even his knowledge. Well, he didn't even have to sign off on it. So he makes a phone call out there. He says, yeah, I'd like to come out and tour the facility. And they said, sorry, you don't have clearance. Right? This, is, this is Eisenhower, right? He used to be the most powerful general in the world. <laughs> and he says, yeah. okay, here's what's going to happen. I'm going <laughs> to call up my buddies at the First Army. You know, I know pretty much all the generals out there because they served under me. And we're going to come out there and we're going to tour the facility. And if those gates aren't open... Well, there's going to be a problem. And they said, fine, yeah. fine. You don't have to call the first army. You can come out. Right. That was the last president that had any power. Everybody after that was in. They were on their own. And, and Kennedy was a perfect example of that. So, yeah, every president right now, they have to be good on television. Uh, and which the epitome of what we have now. Uh, no offense. Look, I've never voted in my life. But come on. The United States literally. Yeah as a reality television star as a president so anyway yeah no, I, yeah i understand that um yeah but the, yeah see that that's that was my biggest thing mm. um when it when it comes to you know proven earth is flat you know based on science things like that yeah there's some compelling ev evidence right I'll, I'll definitely get that but my biggest concern was and my biggest like issue was like I don't. I can't see world governments all holding just the, the they, biggest they don't, secret. They don't think of it this way. Men, I, I know. I know what you mean, and that is. But it doesn't have to be all world governments. Think of it like this. Men, there's an old saying. I love sayings, and that is, men rarely give up power voluntarily. Men, and it's mm -hmm. most. It's mostly men. Which is, look, you are. If all you have to do is give that speech I gave earlier, it's like, okay, here's what happens if the general public finds out about this your country could be destabilized. That's all they have to hear. 
these men, you know, most politicians, most leaders along those lines, they, they, it's all about money and getting to the, you know, they climb that, those, those rungs of power till they get to the certain point and they will not give it up. And all of a sudden you have to, it's not much motivation. You just tell them, it's like, look, don't screw this up because if they find out you could be, you know, uh, there could be a coup almost overnight. And be like, yeah, yeah, I'm not going to say anything. But you don't have to tell that many people. Do you have to tell the king of France? Or I mean, yeah, the royals in England. Yeah, maybe, sure. Uh, the but there's one of the first rules of power. Look, those anyone that's elected is not the true power. I, I can't stress that enough. It is literally the number one rule of power, which is stay hidden. Uh, the the longer version of that is never put yourself in a position where you can be overthrown. It is the curse and the blessing of power. And that is when you are super, super powerful. I'm going to talk about guys with bank accounts that they don't even look at them because there's no point. Uh, you know, the guys can literally just create money out of nothing and create markets out of nothing. You, can, you, you can't be touched because the public doesn't know who you are, right? You, you can't be overthrown. You, king, kings can be overthrown. But at the same time, you also cannot be famous, you can't be yeah. both. So you can't be in the public eye and out of the public eye at the same time. So it's like, okay, it's the choice they have. So, you know, the puppet master, you don't see who the puppet master is. That's the point. Uh, and the puppets, oh, yeah, you see them all the time. And they can get hurt and overthrown any day, any day you, you want. You, so. you just make a new puppet. Yeah, you just yeah, make I a new agree. puppet. And, and, and yeah. you have to live with that. You have that quiet... It's like, yeah, they're my puppets. And you want to, I, I'm sure it kills them. It's like, you want to tell people, but you can't mm -hmm. because it's like, then it yeah. ruins the whole thing. Yeah, it's like human instincts. Like, you know, something so it, it, like crazy and so powerful. You just want to tell people, but you physically can't do it. Right. And I agree. I definitely believe there's shadow hands moving in all parts of the world that are the ones making decisions, doing things. And we just put people in places that kind of like, be the like the face of the problem or face of the solution right. even though they're not actually the ones believe, so me, I, believe I, me when i say secrets can be kept they can uh the all you have to do is is do is have the right motivation uh with most people you can you can bribe them with other people you can threaten them uh and when you get up to certain high levels it's what it's it's kind of a combination of both which is they don't want to lose what they have they're, they're, they've spent so much time getting you to a certain place and achieving what they have and, of course, accumulating wealth. I mean, come on. It's, that's the easiest thing in the world to tell a rich person is like, yeah, if, if, you, if you let out the secret, come on, there's secret societies out there we still don't know much about. You know, whether it's, I mean, yeah, I know people talk about the Bilderbergs and the Rothschilds and the Trilateral Commission and the Vatican and the Masons and some sort of Jewish cabal and so on and so on. But we, very few times you see, hear any of the inner workings of these things and that's because they you do psychological profiles on these people before you vote them in and you know yeah. you know whether they're going to flip or not and if even and if you're a suspect at all by the way which is i, I should, let me throw this one more in which is astronauts it's like well why isn't any astronaut come out or any high-ranking official, official of nasa and that is well okay one they're military plain and simple uh terry verts which i had to i had the pleasure of kind of debating when he was uh, over in london uh, he's a colonel in the United States military. Look, full bird colonel. <laughs> you don't make it that far unless you can follow orders. And yeah. at the same time, yeah. even if you could come out, who are you going to tell? Are you going to make that risk? Um, uh, are you going to take that risk? Because it, it, they do profiles for, on you. And of course, anyone that's in that sort of position, I'm, I'm not going to make people paranoid here, but look, they, they will absolutely track all your emails they will listen to all they'll transcribe all your phone calls and if they even hear words like well, i'm not sure about this or i'm wavering on this or i'm dubious about this or, or or if they're having second thoughts about some sort of crisis of conscience you're automatically flagged and it's like okay well, oh, yeah. go ahead so. no no I'm, I'm just like i agree 100 percent with that mm. like they they definitely track everything people within that kind of position of power oh yeah what they what they do and what they think yeah. There's no privacy with them. Like no, anything I, they why why would say you, why would you no. you can't you can't risk it. Uh, in fact, there, I mean the spy community. If you watch enough movies, look, we have spies that watch other spies on our own side, yeah. just just to make sure you know. And, and that goes back to olden times, right? You send somebody off on a mission, and if you even have the slightest doubt, you're like, 
okay, you guys follow him, make sure he does what, you know, and then gets just layers and layers. It's awful. So. Yeah, I mean, even now, even with a common person, though, like, I, I know Facebook for sure, they listen in conversations all the time. Of course. Of course. Look, even, it, like, it, my, me and my fiance, actually, we did an experiment on this. Yeah. Because I had read something about this. I was like, all right, well, you know, we'll check it out. And they said if you continuously say, like, keywords, like, we did the dog toy uh, example, right? right? So we kept saying, we kept bringing up dog toys, how we want to get a puppy, things like that. And then she got on, because I don't have Facebook, because I purposely deleted that, right. didn't like it, didn't trust them. But she still has it. And so we kept saying it with her phone around us. And sure enough, when she got on, there was nothing but dog toy ads everywhere on her Really? And do, and do you even have a dog? No. Huh? We don't, we don't. <laughs> That's awesome. That is yeah. great. People should do more of that. And yeah, yeah, you're absolutely right. Social media. It's funny. I, I don't want to make fun of the Nazis necessarily. But if you would take like somebody from the SS in the 40s and you brought them in now and you showed them Facebook, they would look at you and be like, Wait, people volunteered for this? Wait, you mean yeah. like, like like climbing over each other, like like making sure they're on Facebook? It's like yeah, it's it's like a it's like a rite of passage now for a kid. You know, you got to be on Facebook. Uh, but yeah, social media. Once that, I knew a couple. I knew I still know a guy uh, that works for a company that does data mining from Facebook. Do not think for a second that that data is worth billions. And yeah, that's how they stay wealthy. The, they don't just get all that money from ad revenue. I know they sell data. Oh yeah, of they course. Everybody sells data. Why? Why wouldn't you? You of course you're going to mm -hmm. sell data. Uh, that's 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 what you want to know. You want to know. Remember, if, especially in capitalism, you want to know what people are interested in buying, and if you can target market. I mean, seriously, that dog toy thing. That's brilliant. And other people look. You're not the first one, obviously. I mean, there's been people. Uh, there was a news reporter I remember last year. Or, you know, she even mentioned it on her broadcast. It was like a local news station. She says I was talking about blah blah blah, and then all of a sudden. There it was on my phone, and it's like, yeah, yeah, we've gotten basically voice recognition has gotten so good that we can do that now. It's it's kind of scary, in a way. Yeah, it it, it is because it makes you wonder, like, no matter what you say, like someone's hearing it somewhere. Yeah, you know? yeah. At the same, yeah, well, yeah, you want to go into dark places. Uh, uh, mention like uh, like like Google. Try to Google. You want to yeah. You want to do an experiment that could like be risky. Uh, start doing Google searches for how to kill the president. <laughs> do that for like a week. I, I can't do that because I'm I'm currently in the military. So no, 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 no. I'm saying no. I'm just saying. But yeah, yeah, if anyone has any doubt of what you're saying, no, that dog toy thing's a bunch of BS. Really? Type in what I just said into Google and do it for like a week and see what oh, yeah. happens to you. You're gonna get a knock on the door. Yeah, probably gonna get a knock on your door. Even though back in the day, it had to be like a personal somebody that would say, oh, yeah, I heard somebody talking about this. But now it's not that way. Now they just monitor, uh, you know, stuff. I mean, hell, I mean, come on. As, as tech savvy as I have been, there are certain things in Google I will not type in because yeah. I know full well. It's like, no, you know, even if you're even if you're 99 percent sure they're not listening. No, of course they are. You know, there's they don't have to listen anymore. We've got machines that the algorithms have gotten so good that they can track keywords. I mean, seriously, I don't even the, the whole thing about terrorists. It's like it's, you, you'd be an idiot to be a terrorist in this country, truthfully, uh, because oh, yeah. they, they will track they They, will, they know what you're going to do before you're going to do it. Yep, So exactly. And it's kind of like a blessing and a curse, though, because like in that instance, yeah, I, I would kind of hope that we can prevent like like crazy like bad things like that from happening you know like terrorist organizations committing some sort of oh, like sure sure mask or something right that's good i'm cool with that like you can prevent that but we do overstretch it to people's personal lives for no other purpose than selling what their thoughts are to another company to advertise towards them yeah i know and and i've got mixed feelings on that because uh, you know if you're marketing has been doing their thing for a long time and what is considered out of bounds when it comes to marketing? I mean, yes, yeah, some people would be, you know, some people are like grateful. Oh, hey, I was just looking for this dog toy. Uh, but other people would be like, but it's kind of it's kind of hypocritical because you say, oh, yeah, by the way, is it OK if we listen to if we transcribe everything you say, even though you're you're not on your phone because <laughs> because we want to sell you something? But most people wouldn't wouldn't go for that. So it's this mm -hmm. weird. Uh, it's it's I, I don't even. I'm not even sure if I have a solid opinion on it because I know what they're doing. Um, let me let me rattle off a story real quick. We'll go back to like 1990. You ever hear the the uh, it used to be called the the GI Joe 
clause. Did you ever hear about this? I did not. Okay, this is good. So back when, before the internet, uh, you know, just before the internet, I should say, the the makers of G.I. Joe, I think it was Hasbro at the time, they mm -hmm. made a, they drew during their television, the, the, the cartoon series, you know, G.I. Joe, greatest American hero, G.I. Joe is there. And what they did was they used the same animators for the commercials that they did the show. And then they ran the show back to back episodes and then they ran the commercials, only their commercials between those episodes, right? And every 15 mm -hmm. minutes. So what mm -hmm. happened was for two hours, kids were watching this, but they couldn't tell exactly when the show went to commercial and when the commercial came back to the show. And so basically they were watching a two hour commercial every day. And what happened was, uh, you know, kids go to the store. We've all done this, right? You go to the store. It's like, mommy, can I have this? It's like, no, no, no. But they got to the GI Joe toys. Be like, mommy, can I have this? And, and uh, mom would go, no. And, and the kid then would turn and go, oh no, no, no. This goes in the basket. <laughs> And well, it, like I go, they, I loved GI Joe's growing up. I collected all of them. You can, I absolutely loved them. Yeah. So I can understand that. So mothers started uh, comparing notes, like they do. It's like, hey, you know, Timmy threw a, a tantrum in the in the store the other day. It's like, yeah, my Jimmy did too. And all of a sudden, it became a congressional hearing, to where they had to. I think it's called the child the Digital Child Protection Act now, where you could not do that. Basically, it's like, okay, if you run your shows, you cannot run your commercials during your shows because of the temptation to just kind of slide it in together, blend it all, stitch it all together. Uh, because again, that's that's classic conditioning. If you are engaged with something long enough, it doesn't take, in fact, I think it's just about 40 minutes is the threshold. Uh, it's in your head. And then you're like, yeah, you walk out of it. It's like, yes, I would like a pack of cigarettes or whatever it is. And, uh, and what do you mean? Go ahead. That's no time. No, I was just saying, like forty minutes. That that's a small amount of time. Well, but you, you, but, like... but but what I mean is, you have to be engaged for forty minutes. There are no commercials necessarily for forty minutes, unless you're talking about infomercials, which do very well. well yeah. But at least well, they... no, I'm not, I'm not questioning you. I'm just saying, like that's that's crazy that like our brains yeah. only need that little bit amount of time. But it's way, but, like, but it's it got to be voluntary. Things. That's that's the key there. It's got to be voluntary. It's not like you can sit somebody down from a set and hold their eyelids open and say, okay, watch this, and they'll they'll be convinced in forty minutes. If you voluntarily go into something for forty minutes and and be engaged, which is why, by the way, the documentary did as well or is doing as well as it's doing because. Yeah. People are engaged for, it's about 100 minutes long. And by the time you realize it, that, it's, um, uh, that it's, a, it's a real thing, it's not some sort of parody, all of a sudden you're in it. And then you're mm -hmm. just like, whoa, whoa, what, what's happening? <laughs> you don't know what oh, you're doing. Yeah, that, that was me and my fiance. We were sitting on the couch. We were watching it. We were just, we were stuck on it. Yeah. We could not stop watching it. Yep, same it, thing, it, same it, thing it, with... It, 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 same thing with the topic if you're in YouTube. I've heard this more and more. Um, in fact, there was a guy from Google that came out last year. It was uh, he was an ex-developer. And he was talking. They were asking him about uh, why Google rec or YouTube recommends what it does on the, on the sidebar. Recommended for you. And out of all the topics he could bring up, he, he, he said Flat Earth. He said, well, if the average person that gets into Flat Earth watches 20 videos in a row what do you think we're going to recommend? <laughs> it's, like, it's like all of a sudden they look, they, their algorithms, they look for topics that people really sink their teeth into. And when, you know, when, like you said, you couldn't stop watching it. That's what happens with the YouTube videos. They just want, they keep watching more and more and more and more. And then finally they get tired and it's like, okay, I gotta, you know, I gotta go sleep. But yeah, they do that for every time I hear it. It's about two weeks. It's amazing. They wow. yeah, they come home. It's like more flat Earth readers, and then all of a sudden their family starts looking at them weird, and then they end up like Richard Dreyfus from Close Encounters of the Third Kind, where he builds a giant mountain in his living room. Oh man! Yeah. Now, I, okay, I'm sure you get this question asked a lot, mm -hmm. right? So, what if the reverse was proven? So, what if we did something that was undeniable right. that proved it was a globe? What would that do for oh, you? Oh, I'd quit. I, I want everybody in flat earth wants that to happen. That's the weird thing. Mm -hmm. We're not, we're not talking about some sort of religion. We're not talking about Scientology. We're, we're talking mm -hmm. about uh, a, a worldview, which we wanted to shut down 
the the t-shirt should read i became a flat earther because they tried to debunk flat earth and with that, there is a t-shirt like that out there which is i would love for somebody to prove it love it in fact i've been trying to come up with easier it's not like we're we're trying to create these echo chambers with a with a locked door on it which we can't get out of um mm -hmm. people have said okay what if, you know i've heard it many times like would you go to space if somebody sent you to space like, well, absolutely i'd go to space they're not going to send me to space but i'd love to go to space and then i thought okay just put a freaking 4k camera on the capsule of some rocket that's leaving the solar system turn it on don't turn off the um uh don't turn off the uh uh, don't don't hit any edits. It's continuous footage, and show that. And they're they're never going to do that either. It's never. It's kind of weird that it's never ever happened in the history of space travel. You know, with all these different yeah. countries going up, it's never ever happened. It's like oh, okay, fine. In fact, somebody said, well, maybe there's a ground test we can do. I go, yeah, there is a ground test you can do. It would help a great deal. It won't prove that the Earth is a globe, but it'll help. And that is, tell me how a spacesuit works. And you're saying, well, what do you mean? It's like, well, tell me how it stops a vacuum. Don't tell me about the heating and the cooling and the oxygen and the uh, condensation and whatever else you have in there. Tell me about how a soft, pliable material stops the vacuum of space. Because it doesn't happen. Uh, it, that pressure needs a container, plain and simple. Um, it, like a can of hairspray or a balloon. Uh, they they get, you know, or basketball. Basketball is a perfect example. Um basketball has layers like a spacesuit and when you put a little air in it it goes tight as a freaking drum and that's not even in a vacuum that's just with a little bit of pressure on the inside and a little bit less pressure on the outside when you get close to a vacuum it goes exponential uh, in fact you look up videos on youtube put anything in a vacuum chamber that's pressurized it will blow up it will detonate and mm -hmm. yet the um the spacesuit is the exact opposite uh it's pliable you can bend your arms. Your your fingers are articulated. You can you can do complex electric uh, electronics, uh, and and there's no problem at all. And it should be the exact opposite. It should go. People should turn into a parade float. It should go tight as a drum. It should burst, and they should die. And we never see that. And so that my challenge. And and not only. And I did a clue on this, which was okay. Even if you could convince me. Now that you have some sort of weird microprocessor technology that could balance the vacuum of space, which would, of course, would completely blow away the second law of thermal dynamics, which is a whole other thing. And you could do it now in 2019. How did you do it in 1969 with, with analog? Why didn't any astronaut ever care about how much air they had on the moon? How, <laughs> and not only that, how much oxygen were you breathing? Because remember, we're, we're only breathing about 20% oxygen here. Uh, the rest is nit yeah. nitrogen. Where Did you bring up a whole bunch of nitrogen with you? And, and if they say, oh, no, we, we were breathing only oxygen. Just, nope, that'll kill you. That's toxic. 100% oxygen is toxic to humans. It will kill you dead. So how did you pull this off? You know, and they, they don't answer it. That and, of course, um, that that's my test. I'm sorry. That, as far as convincing me, that is the thing. I, in fact, I, I've thrown that into episodes time and time again now. I go, look, put me in a vacuum chamber and a self-contained spacesuit, not something with a tether on it. That's a G-force suit. We use those in fighter planes. Something that we used in 1969 because we've never... It's amazing. All these guys went to space. Nobody has ever had a problem with their suit to where they've died. Nobody. I, it, 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 not once. It was like, you know, he ran out of air and died. There was a hole in his suit and he died. There's so we see this in science fiction movies all the time. Astronauts die in science fiction movies every day, and this never ever happens. Uh, you saw the guys on on Apollo on the moon falling on rocks constantly. Nobody got up and checked their suit. Nobody. It's like you, the first thing. I mean, you'd be scared to death. Not to mention, sorry, I, I go off the Apollo thing here for a second. No, Not to good. mention that when you're on the moon, right? I don't care how hardened military you are. I mean, granted, yeah, there was a, most guys were colonels, and I think there was even a lieutenant general. You are going to be so sober and so focused on your mission, all you're going to care about is making it back alive. That's all you're going to care about. You're going to be checking your gauges all the time. How much, how much oxygen? How much time? How much time? You know, is the, is the capsule okay? Everything okay? Yeah, good, great. You, these guys couldn't have care... Like, care in the world they're running around they had a dune buggy they were playing golf they fell on a regular basis they told jokes 
that was the last thing on their mind uh, was was the mission and you know the 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 seriousness of it and again that's part of the production because you can't have they were never in any danger because they never went and the reason why is you never want to if an astronaut died on the moon it would be the moon would instantly become a tombstone that's what it'd be everyone would be americans would be looking up all night going oh the moon so sad you remember those three guys that went up there and died yeah it's so sad that's all they do that's all they'd care about you'd have to send a mission to get the bodies oh i'm sorry they, that's actually, the that, no that's actually a crazy point because i never actually thought about it in that aspect because when i was always thinking about things i'm thinking about the scientific right right the math behind it, like the physical images, but I never really thought about like the person themselves and how they conducted themselves on those missions. Right. Because you're right. If I was sent to a different planet in, in an environment that I knew nothing about, but just like the bare minimum what I thought I knew, right. I, you're right. I would be scared shitless. I would be constantly, like you said, checking gauges, checking my suit, yeah. because just like the smallest mistake oh, yeah. would be. How catastrophic yeah. you're gonna die there's no there's no someone gonna send you like an ambulance and you know help you out or pull you away like you're pretty much gonna instantly die yeah nobody talks about the air mixture i have yet find me a uh uh an audio clip from apollo and there might be one out there i don't know but i you'd think there'd be a ton of them where it'd be like yeah i gotta go in we only got i only got you wouldn't even let it get down to single digits be like as soon as i was uh, like 15 minutes of air left I'd be freaking in that freaking capsule. No, oh God. And then you have to decompress it every time. Uh, you know what? I don't even want to get into Apollo. I could spend I could spend hours just destroying Apollo on a regular basis, which is why, again, you know, we we go into this as much as we do. Uh, we, Apollo is again easy for us to do because we didn't do most of the work. Other people did the work for us. We just gave them a reason why, which I should state, which is when I looked, I hated Apollo for a long time, but I couldn't figure out why which was, it's like, why, why do it? Why fake it? Uh, you know, is it just rah, rah, wave the flag, go team. America's the greatest. Yeah. I mean, that's good. It's not great. I mean, it's a good answer, but then yeah. when I got into flat earth, I, I totally understood, which is uh, okay. You have to fake it. You have to do it on a military standpoint. You've got to do it as fast as possible and you've got to shut it down because the last thing you want to do is have private corporations get in there. Remember NASA is just a collection of parts from General Dynamics and Boeing um, and uh, who are the others out there? Wow. Was it space now, right? What? Then uh, Elon Musk and he- Oh, you want to get into, you want to get into uh, Elon Musk? Oh, let, let's get into that. Uh, the, <laughs> the Tesla Roadster in space was so bad that he will never do it again. It was an mm -hmm. example of trying to fake space on the cheap, which is, uh, I don't even know if there was a real freaking rocket that launched anything, uh, which is that car that was sent up there when it was first sent to us, everybody in the flyer community, when we saw this, you know, I, I got a, I got an image of it sent to me and I said, Oh, is that, did Jared make that? I go, I go, it's not bad. I go, it's kind of cheesy. And then some, he, some guy wrote back, goes, no dude, that's a live feed. And I go, live feed from who? And it's like SpaceX. I'm going, my ass, it's SpaceX. And I'm looking at this thing. I'm going, Oh, because the general population knows almost nothing it, that's what they count on, like the astronaut suit. They know nothing about physics, which is that car was impossible. Uh, uh, four openers. Every pressurized system on that car would have exploded. The tires would have detonated. Uh, the bat, Remember, it's a, it's a battery-powered car. So uh, the although does it have a gas engine or is it all battery? It might be all battery. It doesn't really matter. Uh, the, the battery fluid would have, would have burst. The window washer fluid would have burst. Uh, brake fluid would have burst. Everything would have erupted. That car would have just been a freaking mess. Not only um, uh, the, the heat, the hot and cold temperature swings. You know, everybody knows what happens when you throw uh, warm water on a frozen windshield. The, the windshields would have shattered. Uh, if not the front windshields, the side ones would have totally spider webbed in two seconds. Uh, everything would have been warped from the, from the temperature changes. You know, the dashes are not meant to, to withstand anything. The mannequin, I don't know what he was made of. It doesn't really matter. Plus, on top of that, you're using the convertible instead of their flagship S model. Uh, why? There's And the big thing that threw me, kind of like the clue, is which there was no endorsements. Two companies on this thing. One public, one private. You had SpaceX and you had Tesla. There's not a freaking logo anywhere to be seen. Anywhere. And that's because they were nervous. 
they were like, okay, let's let's just play this thing as generic as possible. It's like what you won't have. The thing should have looked like NASCAR. Should have been wall to wall endorsements. In fact, I it would have taken no marketing guy uh, two seconds to f- think this up. You'd use the S model, and then you sell things for the seats, which is instead of a generic, uh, I don't know, no endorsement, no logo mannequin. Uh, you sell the rights to Disney, you know, for for that. You put um, Iron Man, Boba Fett, Groot, and a Stormtrooper. <laughs> That's it. That that thing's paid for. Yeah. And and yet there's the exact opposite. No logos at all. Sorry. And and then and the television image is perfect. No frame drops whatsoever, uh, except for one thing that was missing, which was the actual drop it, 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 they were really good about it. it was a fine example of misdirection which was if you remember they had the booster rockets which again physically impossible the booster rockets apparently landed on their own back at kennedy which was okay and then they they showed those things landing right next to each other which you would never ever do for safety concerns you would have those rockets miles apart from each other and they landed literally within ten, five seconds of each other at the same time oh and then the big falcon heavy booster the thing that supposedly launched the car Mm-hmm. It supposedly deployed, but we never see it. It should have been, fa- you know, they had three different cameras. Things should have been falling off, drifting off into the background, gra- background falling back to earth, right? You never saw a, a frame of that entire rocket. You never saw wh- what actually launched the craft. It's like all those things combined. No, we, we freaking destroyed it. I mean, within 24 hours, it was like, look, there's no way. I mean, to and honestly... Ha- the social media erupted anyway. There was a lot of people that, that didn't buy it to where even Elon Musk, which was really weird, he uttered that um, uh, that line in the press conference. He goes, you know it's, he goes, it's, you know it's, this is verbatim, you know it's real because it looks so fake. It's like, why do they put you in front of a camera at all? You are terrible at this. You- so you think he, he's in on it then? Do you think? No, Tesla- no, flat earth? No, no, no. He's, no, he's no, just- no, 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 no. Do you think he is in on with the conspiracy okay we're gonna pretend like it's a globe but we know it's flat but we're gonna like still keep the lie going no 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 he, he he's he, just he's just told to fake a space program he just was given a check and told to uh to fake stuff and uh, mm. so that that was basically he, he, it i mean there's lots of people that won't you know what it's it's kind of like hey, take the money and don't ask questions why why would you it's like okay i got the check i'm not gonna ask questions you know money money talks it always has and you can do a lot with people. I mean, how many times we see this in movies and TV where it's like you hand somebody a briefcase of money. And it's like, I was never here. And it's like, nope, I don't even know where I got this money. Uh, so, no, Elon fakes it. But oh, come on, the man, New York Post ran a, uh, an article on him last year. And, and it was it was made me made my day, which was Elon Musk is a total fraud. And they were talking about everything he's ever promised ever. I mean, yeah, fine. He's a software developer and he helped develop PayPal and made billions off the stock offering. I totally get that. But having him, it's like, I'm going to make a plane that's going to go from the United States to China in two hours. And it's going to cost not even business class ticket. Uh, I'm going to make an underground um, bullet train that goes from San Francisco to LA. I'm going to solve Puerto Rico's power problems after the hurricane with my solar array. I'm going to save those kids with my submarine. And so on and so on. Oh, God. And I'm going to send two people to the moon, two tourists around the moon in 2018. He said that in 2017. I remember hearing this. I was up in Canada and, and, he, and I'm doing the math. I'm going, he's going to do this in 16, 18 months. He, he's, got, he's, got no, he's got no booster. He's got no capsule. He's got no pilots. The tourists weren't even announced. He goes, oh yeah, I'm going to send two people around the moon uh, in 2018. And then he pushed it out and then it's gone. It not even talked about. Sort of like the, um, you want to look up something else if you get a chance. I know, I, again, I get kind of excited about this stuff. Uh, the Look up the Google X Prize challenge, which was Google mm-hmm. was paying, I don't know, $20 million to the first private company that could send a capsule to the moon and beam, beam back shots. And, you know, they kicked the can down the road and kicked that can down the road. And there were like five agencies that were getting involved, the Europeans and Israelis and Indian and everybody backed up. That was it. Never happened. But because the story was out there, people thought, you know, assumed, well, it probably did happen, right? No, it never happened. Not even, not even, no one's even come close. Even, think about it this way. We have never, we stopped going to the moon in 1972. Mm-hmm. And not only has nobody gone back, 
you know, not only have the Americans not gone back, nobody else has even landed there. Nobody's even tried to go there. And as, I, as I'm speaking this right now, there are no programs right now committed to the moon. There's, there's, no, there's no astronauts training to go to the moon right now. Everyone just keeps, oh, yeah, we're going to go to the ISS, hang around there for a year. And mm-hmm. anyway, sorry. No, no, keep, keep going. No, 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 this, no, this no. I, I, I have to shut off my rants eventually. So. <laughs> okay, so I got a question. Do you guys have any big projects planned to like go? Because I don't know. Do you believe that like the Arctic Circle and all that just encompasses the outer? Oh, like, the, the, Antar- giant, the Antarctic? Like, the, um, yeah, is it like a. Uh, yeah, I do. But at the same time, the, the problem with it, and we've had people look into it, uh, read through the, the Antarctic Treaty with a fine tooth comb. It's not a light read, by the way. Uh, it is bulletproof. You cannot, you have to get multiple nation sign offs and the permit fees are apparently ridiculous. I mean, you know, pushing hundreds of thousands of dollars. Just just to do any sort of exploration on a, on a, on a group basis. Uh, it is locked down. I mean, I, I, Antarctica, here's the problem though, because people have suggested this since day one, which is okay. Can't you just like hire somebody, you know, a pilot, you know, that has a jet with a, with a big fuel tank and just go. It's like, well, okay, you could, except there's only military down there. They don't want you to go down there. The treaty, you know, they're authorized to stop you from going. Plus, if you go down there, you're going to have to have a pilot that was willing to bypass GPS. Because just about everybody that does any navigation nowadays, it's based off of GPS. Well, GPS is a military system based on, you know, the United States Department of Defense uh, from 1996, which is really, a, and now they will, mainstream will say, well, it's a global positioning system, which is based off of 32 satellites, right, with blanket coverage. And I come back and say, no, it's just the old Loran system, the old radar, ground radar, I mean, powerful ground radar. We'll just add another sticker put on it and a higher budget, which is why the planes disappear, which is why we lost the Malaysian flights out in the Indian Ocean, which is why when you fly to Hawaii from San Francisco, your plane goes off the system and you're just kind of on your own for a while. I mean, yeah, you know approximately where you're going, which is why the latitude and longitude kick into approximated mode. Well, if you have a, yeah. if you have a GPS system, uh, you should never be an approximated or estimated mode. You should always know where you are. It's like, well, the pilots know. It's like, no, no, they don't. They know roughly where they are. And then they have to adjust their course once they get to a certain point. Yeah, they're lined up in a, in a specific zone. And yeah, they, they're, they're a pretty good shot as long as they don't deviate you know, off, their, off their path. When they, get, when they get out of the fog, more or less, they'll be in the right place. But yeah. anyway, so sorry, that long, again, long answer. No, 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 that's perfectly fine. Um, now, what, okay, what would you suspect would happen? All right, for instance, say you were able to just you, – you took a rocket and you were able to take it straight up. Right. Do you think you would actually breach what you considered to be like the dome or do you think it would just stop? Uh, like you're a- not – well, you're not breaching it. Uh, you may stop. The question is if it's a soft barrier or a hard barrier. Um, mm-hmm. And by that, I mean the United States and the Soviet Union tried. They, they literally tried uh, from 58 until 62. I'm sorry, 58, 58, 59, 60, 61. Uh, four years, uh, the United States Soviet Union, they took their atomic weapons program and they only fired straight up for four years. And the first shots were megaton and then it was kiloton range after that. And I think they realized, I mean, look, if you can't break through something with a megaton weapon, uh, then you're not going to be getting through it any, anytime soon. And so then they just had to map the sky out and figure out what the shape of this place was. So if I was in Iraq and going up there, uh, one, I wouldn't be advised anyway. Uh, plus, I also, again, it may sound outlandish, I don't think an astronaut's ever been on the top of a rocket ever anyway, because that's the last thing you would do. Uh, you know, even if you're going to fake a space program, you're not going to put people on the top of a pile of liquid explosives, which is all they really are. I mean, there's just a giant bomb. And because if something goes wrong, like the Challenger in 1986, well, then you're going you're gonna to have to deal with that. And you'll lose people for real. Where in 1986, the thing blows up and it's like, okay, we got to relocate you. And they spread them around, around around the country, use more or less their real names. And it was easy to do because in 1986, there was no internet, not even close. And then you know, they got older and they're still, as far as I know, six out of seven of them are still walking around. 
I was gonna, yeah, that was gonna be my follow up question. So you you think that they're, they're still alive? They just said that yeah. these people had died. But yeah, why why waste them? I mean, it costs a lot of money to raise a soldier. And if you're you're talking about captains and majors, I and mean, you're talking about officers in the United States military, you're not just gonna kill them. If if you can help it, I mean, you relocate them, sure. And you know, but you know, if, if, worst case scenario, you put them in a at a secret base, take them out to Groom Lake, uh, or, or or one of the bases we don't talk about. Uh, best case scenario, you put them out in public life, and if someone discovers them and, you know, it makes the headlines, then you relocate them. Um, you don't have to kill them. It's not like uh, yeah. it's not like the old days where it's like, oh, sorry, we got to kill them. Uh, because, because this thing is so big that even if you found them, people wouldn't know what to make of it. Be like, wait, I thought you were in that. And then you could claim national security. You could shut people up. The point is you don't have to kill them. Yeah, I'm sorry that, that families may think they're dead, but uh, it's part of the, you know, you, you got to make it seem natural. Yeah. Okay. That's interesting. I, I, I've i never actually heard that theory. Yeah. But... yeah. Look up, look up the mean, shot. I... It's, seriously, it's spooky. When you look at the shot and it's out there, it's a meme. You look at the astronauts from Challenger and then look at the images of the people that have their name that are scattered around the country, most of them are professors, which is weird, uh, or teachers, they look, I mean, it's not like Hollywood where you take an actor and you make him look older and it just doesn't quite mm -hmm. match up. It's like, yeah, I get it. He's wearing a, an older makeup thing. No, these guys look exactly what they should look like with uh, be aging 30 years or whatever it is, 96 to, yeah, 30 years. They look exactly what they should look like. Huh. Hmm. I mean, like I said, it, if it were to be true, like I said, I, it wouldn't necessarily surprise me much because I, like I said, I'll believe this to the day I die that the government definitely does some shady shit for sure. Oh, yeah. Well, why? They definitely cover a lot of stuff up. They definitely mislead people in a lot of ways. They do a lot of programs that are very unethical and question very questionable. So yeah. I don't know. Like, like I said. <laughs> I'm still in firm belief, you know. I know, that... I know. Think, but but let me let me let me add on to your thing right there, which was categorically, we don't even have spies. We all know our country has spies, and we have a, a huge military intelligence budget for spies. Nobody knows any spies. Y your husband or wife could be a spy, and you will not know it because they're not going to tell you. Uh, we yeah. didn't have a U two spy plane. We did not have a spy plane. It did not exist until one was shot down over Russia. And then it's like, oh, yeah, by the way, we had a spy plane. Uh, it's like, really? And then, like, my, my favorite one, and I, I won't keep you too much longer, which is the SR-71. Everyone knows the SR-71 Blackbird, right? That thing what, went from inception to retirement, and nobody knew about it. And then the United States decided to show off. And it's like, oh, yeah, by the way, you know, they did a press conference. That's how bad it got to where it's like, hey, we're, we're retiring our super cool plane because it's really, really flashy. And people are going, wow, that's really amazing. It's like, yep, yep. And then they asked him. It was a general. He was he was up, up on stage. It's like, hey, what are you going to replace this with? He goes, oh, nothing. <laughs> we're not going to replace it. It's like, of course you are. Of course you're going to replace it. But you can't. It's a dumb question to even ask him because he's not going to tell you. It's like, yeah, because it was already replaced anyway. They already had something. Of course, yeah, it was it was already in the air. We already know what it is. It's the Aurora Project, and it's so fast, nobody can even take a shot out of it, because by the time you hear it, it's gone. Look, group, Area 51 exists. We lie. We lie about stuff, and governments lie for, and I'm not going to defend them necessarily, but they lie for what they call the greater good. And that is, look, there's decisions we have to make for you that you would never make on yourself. It's impossible decisions where lives are lost sometimes, and we will make them for you. And, or for national security, or to protect your nation. And, and it's like, look, you don't want to know because you don't want to get your hands dirty, so we're going to do it for you. And yeah. this, this is one of those in their case. Now, when they come out, I almost guarantee, if, if and when this thing comes out, they will say, look, we hit it for your own good. That will be the line. In fact, they may even get whoever to built this built this place to say that. It's like, don't blame NASA. They were only doing what we told them to do. And it's like, all right, sure. I mean, it's a good science fiction movie. I like it. Sorry. Anyway, any, anything else? Because unfortunately, I do have to wrap this up. Oh, no. I, you know what? I think this has been a fantastic conversation. I really do appreciate you coming on. Oh, yeah, I, no. I definitely, Happy to do it. Definitely going to look for more things for sure. And um, like I, said, I, I really appreciate it. Thank you so much for actually doing this. Oh, no, no. It was my pleasure, and uh, thank you for inviting me on. And if you need anything else, just reach out. Definitely will. All right, you take care, and like I said, thanks again. All right, have a good day.
All right, you too. Bye-bye.